Hi, so this is my Moly Lexington part eight. part 8, I am Rich, this is my show, RMX Models, and today I'm going to be working on these here um, posts, at least to start. Let's see if I can't uh, re-angle this camera just a little tiny bit. Last time, as I said, worked on these a little bit, and that's going to continue today. So what I want to do is use these to make the posts, and those posts have little, like, cutouts on them. For decoration and then they also have these uh, bigger cutouts that are meant for uh, holding things up so if I take two of these put them together get them as close as I can I think what I'm gonna do is I want these to nicely and levelly that's the big thing hold their um, Oh, what do they call them? I think they're called belaying racks. I think that's it. Up. So that means what I want to do is grab two of these together. This little guy here and then just squeeze really tight. And then I try uh, and fail with this uh, method of work. But I'm just going to thank my new subscriber, Frank23, real quick before I get to the idea that turned out to be good. You know... I need a vice, like an honest to goodness vice, would solve this problem. Because I could just, you know, hold it in the darn vice. That is the best idea. But I have other, I have a desire to do something productive with my night, so. And then I obstinately do something unproductive instead, until I finally start pulling my brain well and truly out of my butt and admit to myself that I need to dot dot dot. And it's still time for me to be smart and get a vice or make one. Yeah. <laughs> Huh, all right, well, I guess there's really only one thing for it, and that's to do it. just do it. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna go and get a vice. I'm gonna go get a little bench vice. Yeah, because that's what I'm gonna need to handle this and do this right. Okay, well, next time you see me in this uh, movie, it'll be me getting a bench vice. Okay, about that whole next model and making session would be when I had the vice. Uh, yeah, it's going to be here on, like, Friday, I guess, for Amazon Prime. Two-day delivery might. But anyways, uh, yeah, so there is one other thing I can do, though. I got that bit of wood up there because I need to build a replacement lifeboat. And about, I think it's down, lifeboat, da da da, gloom resist, too far, da da da, right there. Then tie lifeboat to the four rings using a thread. So this is here, and I'm right towards the end of here. So, and this thing is... Yeah, just a brief thing of getting ready for this as well, putting a smoke next. So, no time like the present to get this boat made. Now this boat is about one to one. So I can just measure the plans and enter them into a little computer program I like to use, which you'll probably get to see in time lapse because that's kind of boring. And then I will have something I can print one to one, cut out, and make that wood into. Well, that's the plan anyways. And we all know how plans like to go. So this is that CAD program I like to use on shape. What I did for all these dimensions that you see is I actually took them using the calipers from uh, the plan. I measured out to certain, like where cross members were on the boat or you know, where certain, and then I used that to get certain points that was on like the curve of the boat in another view. And uh, with that, then I adjusted them to uh, near kind of 
easier fraction values, if you will. So point, say, point 0.1 would become 0, or point 0.15 would become point 0.25, stuff like that. Um, and then I go ahead and I make the general shape of everything, you know, using the arcs and other stuff. And I do several uh, things like this. And uh, the idea is if I wanted to, I could 3D print with the boat hull form, but I just instead, you know, make all these uh, drawings or, you know, these uh, faces, if you will, that I end up then extruding, which is, you know, stretching them out, if you will, in 3D space, to make those. And then I go ahead and I make the drawing that you see now. All right. So, yeah, I know the computery bit didn't show this last uh, thing being done. It was a quick thing, and... I was thinking of going to bed, but I figured I'd just bang this out. So, yeah. Those of you who remember that fiasco with the so-called planking fixture, it may even still be in this shop somewhere if I didn't throw it out. Nope. Nope. Well, yeah. I have a similar method I can follow here to make the boat's uh, insides. Yeah, so that is my plan. And uh, I'm going to probably get all the tree huggers in a twist, screaming how wasteful this is, and yeah, 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 you're probably right. But, you know, it was only like two bucks. And I'll probably save the scrap for later use in this boat model anyway, somewhere else. Alright, time to get to uh, laying it on and getting ready for some cutting. All right, yeah, I did a little more than just uh, just the uh, getting it glued on tonight. I'm also gonna do a bit of cutting things down to size. Forgive the muted bit. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, and I wore my goggles. These probably aren't impact rated, but come on, you get points for that, right, Osha? Right, right, right. Okay, I, I really gotta stop that joke, or someone is gonna take it seriously. Or take offense. And both would not be good in my case. Alright, so as you can see, I just want these in smaller pieces, make it a little easier to manage. You know what? Just as a treat, you know, I'll get a time lapse of me cutting up the keel. Forgive me while I adjust the, uh, Precise position to where this uh, camera is pointed. You there? Enough. That looks about right. Okay, time to record the time lapse you bit. And record I do. So as you can see, I'm taking the jeweler's coping saw and I'm following the lines of this uh, plan. It's a one-to-one -one print, so that's how I get this general shape. I did it with a big jigsaw for the. Um, for the uh, fixture thing, and I do it with the uh, little coping saw for this thing, and you get to see the results right about now. So, as you should be able to see, this is uh, gonna form the keel of the boat. It's got some strength, that's good. And uh, next is gonna come frames. Put them all on in a row, let them get glued in, let the glue set, and then uh, do a lot of sanding to kind of smooth things over a bit. Also, you know, the transom goes on and shape the transom as well. And I guess that's called the transom. I don't know. I'm just calling it because that's what I think the uh, model kit calls this bit. And then after that, I go, I'm go. i going to go ahead and uh, use the remaining bits I've got here. Yeah, this is pretty thick. To try and assemble something. Or I might actually have to go the other route and make things a little thinner. That actually might be better. We shall see. We shall see. All right. Well, in the meantime, uh, guess the next clip is going to be of me uh, cutting these out. And this is the good kind of framing, not the bad kind of framing where you do something and set somebody else to take the fall. So, yep, same procedure as the um, keel where I just follow the lines and cut them out of the wood there after having printed it on. So after this, you should see me, uh, I think it's when I look at the how thick the wood I got for the first layer of planking was that I meant to use, and then found it was too thick, so I had to think of another way to do the first layer of planking of this boat. I'm going to be honest, that took a lot less time than I thought it was going to. 
Okay, so now what I gotta do is pretty these up and then somehow get them onto the keel. And that, uh, you gotta adjust the camera angle for. All right. Dun dun dun, new camera angle. Come on. Wait, can I? Now just to make sure that it all is in fact going to work. Oh yeah, we're great. Okay. So, and then to adjust my chair because uh, all the things I should have thought about ergonomics is one that I didn't think I'd have to think about. Oh, anyways. Alright. So, here we are. You also see this, by the way. So, these planks here, I think they're just going to rip apart everything and they're going to be comically fat. I'm not sure if they're like the best thing for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to refrain from that and I'm going to use uh, the, the, all, all this thin board here. So now without much ado though, this would be good to get this, uh, get this good, huh? So step one, get the wood, get, somehow get the paper off. Evidently, Blue Blue likes wood a lot more than it likes paper. So that is a plus. This is actually easier to peel off than the adhesives used on stickers like that are meant to peel off. Sticker makers take note. Don't you hate that? Like, you, you know, you see a sticker on something, like a piece of wood. Like, oh, I don't know, these right here and they stick and they're like all on there and now you really can't use them because they were stuck to a veneer like that. So you only use like half of it like this. Yeah, okay, I'm being oddly specific. All right. And of course, as is the way of the universe, right after I say, hey, this comes off easy with the knife and stuff, it starts being hard to take off. But with a bit of sandpapering, a bit of knife work, and a bit of good old-fashioned cursing and swearing, I actually do manage to get the uh, paper that I stuck onto these off of it so I can go ahead and, uh, you know, get to the part where I show you the finished assembled frame right about, uh, oh, I don't know, now? Alrighty, so... I glued them all together and they fit and they look okay-ish. I can work with this. Problem is that these are gonna these wiggled a bit when I tried sanding them, so I need something that's gonna hold them all together. And I figured I have a little something from the I think the the veterans of this channel will remember when I had the exactly how I did the dreadnoughts compartments up. I used um so this company I use a lot Micromark. They have a cat a urethane casting, you know, try it out kit. And uh well, so I used the mold making material from that kit to fill things in and act as a, you know, act as the, you know, things I would later cut out and make the mold internally with. I tried uh, with um, uh, putty before, but it just didn't quite work out right, so I had to go the other route. Well, I still have this uh, kit I just mentioned. This isn't the mold material. This is plasticine putty, I believe, is what it's called. You might find it under, uh, what, um, non-drying clay or something. But uh, yeah, this is useful if you're trying to make a mold for urethane casting, but it's also going to work as a fixture. Problem I find is that it likes to leave everything it touches, well, blue. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that everywhere if I can avoid it, because I'd love to show off the wood. We'll see if I can even, I can pull that off or not. But with this in there, and I now have some kind of reinforcement against which to sand. This should make things a little... It does make it easier. Alright, goody goody. I'm just going to try not to destroy anything. Or, I'm going to get in there. Or sand on too much of this blue stuff. You know, worst comes to worst, I'll just paint the, I'll paint the lifeboat. I'll paint the lifeboat. Well, I'll paint the inside of the lifeboat anyway. 
And here I just keep sanding. Guess I could sand the uh, blue stuff off too if I wanted. Honestly, this can work. I'm excited about my chan- Damn it. Oh, I'm gonna have to be careful. Yeah, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna give this a bit of a reinforcement and then call it quits for tonight. Let this really shulk it up. That water. I like that though, that stuff comes with like spaghetti. That's awesome. It makes my life easy. And I do like easy. Easy is good, but easy and works. Well, that's where the real fun is. Work it. Work about that. Okay, good. Hopefully, when this all dries, it's still good. Just to give you a closer look of what's going on. Alrighty, so last time I remember mentioning something about a vice. As you can see, I have a vice, but it wasn't eligible for free shipping on its own, so yeah, I got this nice little camera too. Yeah, it wasn't, or sorry, this is not a camera, but a tri, not tripod even, but a, a camera arm, pretty much. So yeah, now as long as I can, I'm going to need to move this so I don't, mm, this thing go up a little more. Alright, we good. Golden, perfect. Alrighty, huh. so, now that's right, I guess it's time for me to, yeah, go ahead and get this party started. Boom. So what I end up doing with this vise is I end up finding an old piece of wood, you know, three strips put together that I'd used for some other part. And I use that as a kind of jury rigged parallel. And that's how I got all these pieces to just barely fit. And then I could start scribing lines on them, which I do next. And there we go. There we have it, everybody. And if I was really conniving and didn't care about OSHA. I could just barely do it if I set it up the right way. Huh. Huh. Huh, now I'm getting ideas. Huh. Set it up just, might set this up and tie it down good. Hold the phone. Okay, then I gotta deal with that, and that's not quite the easiest thing to run by. Yeah, if I'm gonna do it this way, well, you know, interestingly enough, I already, I originally did plan on doing this by hand, and that is what I'm probably gonna have to do. Cause I can run this in there, and then very carefully start my cutting. Oh dear, this isn't tight enough. Is it tight enough now? Yes, yes it is. So now... Huh, not doesn't want my friend that... Alright, it wants to be do this the hard way. It wants to be difficult. Okay, I can play this game. It didn't want to do this. It didn't it thought it wanted to do this, and now I will teach you that it did not. Okay. Remember kids Safety first.
Okay. Well, yeah, it started wandering. Guess I have to do this one at a time. <sighs> Didn't I say something about quitting the OSHA jokes? Although, in all seriousness, I'm not sure if they'd be more upset with me jury rigging some kind of side mill, or this, what we see here, which is me cutting these out individually. And now for the final verdict, huh? Did it work? Well, oh, it, it actually, quite, but, but it is workable. It's workable. Hold up, where'd it go? There it is, file. My, hello, file, my old friend. And it's great to work with you again. Uh -huh. Come on, eh, come on, come on. Start working, darn it. There we go. Nice. Nice. Nice, nice. It worked. Got it to happen. All right. All right. Sweet. <coughs> Looks like these deck fittings are now able to happen. All right. Well, I guess I know what happens then. All right. Good deal. All right, as you can also see, this guy seems doing pretty good, huh? Well, let's see if we can keep that tradition going, huh? All righty then, here is my... I hope that's not a dry patch. Oh, well, if it is, I'll have to work around it. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm going to do that, and that... And that, yes, right like that, okay. Yeah, you'd hope that it'd like stay better, but yeah, life happens. Unless I want to like start pinning, but I really don't want to have to do that because then it'll throw things off. Oh. All right, so here is a time lapse of me planking this uh, little rowboat. What I have to do is one plank at a time because I can't really pin these, otherwise things split and don't work so good at this scale. So I got to use the magnets in there, uh, metal bits. Another thing you'll see me do towards the end of this time-lapse clip is cutting some lengths of what ends up being the rack piece of these belaying racks, I think they're called. Um, yeah, you see me doing that right now. I actually measure the plan, cut the piece of wood, mark it out appropriately with the calipers, because that's actually a good trick I learned. Holy shit, F. Fucking Mongo hands here. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> big hands. Small work area. And there you to fit my head. Wow. This is like an easy shot to get when you have the right equipment. Uh, looks like I didn't really need any um, head mounted display to get the views I wanted. Although, if there is a demand of, you know, deliver OP on this uh, video, I'll go and I'll do as I'd originally suggested and try to make some kind of head mounted rig. Hmm. Looks like I've got a thing here. Let me just tweak that maybe. And if needed I'll just be able to, you know, find it out there. That's great. That's this is a good thing. Yay. 
Okay, one of these racks down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to go. Cool. Alright. Hmm. Next one. Up here, I guess. That, there we go. Got my hand in the uh good in the glue. There we go. Sure I've mentioned it by now that it was one of those old timer tricks that I was told about to use the sharp end of a caliper to mark things. Yeah. Remember kids, all the far back old timers, remember when they did all the stuff we do today without the fun computer crap. Learn from them. I know some people, I know, I know, some people, I think it was Thoreau, said there's nothing of use I've learned from my elders, but, you know, I think it was in like Walden or something, but, uh, you know, you don't, you don't get old by being, you don't get to be old by being a complete idiot. Alright, so, here I actually make the uh, belaying rack, several of them. Uh, just going in a row, I cut all the rack se sections to the same sizes, and then I marked again with the calipers. Making sh And here I go, I cut even more of them, so there are some uh, littler ones and bigger ones. And as you can see, I take them, I mark them, I sand and file as appro or just file out the little grooves as appropriate. And then here I go, adding some even more uh, planks to the rowboat, because, you know, i got to wait for glue to dry and stuff. And... Hold on. Yeah! Wait, uh, is this gonna be, is this gonna do that? Do me like that now? Nope. Stay. Twitty thing. Okay, looks like I'm gonna be doing more of the, uh, belaying racks after all. Okay, so I have three in here, and I have a bunch more. There's like these that I gotta do. Those two front ones are three, and then there's like the ones that are like three in the middle, and two on the sides. Hold the phone. Let's see. Let's grab our plan here. And let's see if that's really totally the case. So you are... You're, it's fair to say you're 16, which is cool. Right? You're 16. Are you 16? You're also 16. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to make these identical. All right, so then I get called up by the wife. And let's see, did this improve or... Really? Really? Well, it's a little better than it was before, I think. Small improvements, right? Okay, let's go add the next piece of this puzzle. And this next piece I add, and I even put in some shims just to better press everything down together. Small improvements to the methods, right? Right. Okay, here's the next normal seat segment. This should go better with a new and sharp bit on the, uh... Okay, where'd the scalpel go? Uh... Come on, scalpel. Okay, hold on. It's gonna be somewhere somewhere nearby. It's not like I go and I throw these things around willy-nilly. I'm not that criminally negligent. Wait, right there, right in front of me. I'm sure there's someone out there in the camera going, Rich, there! Alright, hold on, come on, come on. Eat my fingertips. Sweet. Now I'm careful. I should be able to avoid making this too crooked. Yeah, I'm going on like in short little strokes just to keep this as straight as I can so I can follow the score that I made in the wood earlier. And I'm going with the grain too. 
So yeah. Come on, come on. There, huh? All right. Yay. Hmm. Should probably cut a bunch of these. And here I actually follow my advice. Start making a rant about being careful about the jokes you tell because, you know, our words affect our thoughts and everything like Aristotle said. And then I come up with a really interesting observation. And it, it, it is a point. It is a point. Not as sharp as this point. Ha! <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Okay, apparently sharper. Or did I just drop it wrong? No, no, definitely sharper. Definitely sharper. Okay, usually this thing drops straight down. What the hell? Wait a Oh my god. <laughs> Did I straight up... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, apparently, over time, without realizing I've been doing this, I have been bending this thing. <laughs> Okay, well, only one thing for that, then. There we go. That's straight-ish. Okay, let's try that again, shall we? Now, if I've done my job right, this should... There we go! There we go! Okay, now it has a point again. <laughs> hey, joking can be beneficial. <laughs> it can help people. Show me that this thing was out of whack. Wow. Yeah, so that previous rant that I covered in time lapse, I guess it would have added some useful exposition to that, but I figured that whole scene was just too funny not to include here in a lot of its entirety. Now, as for uh, what I'm doing now in this uh, bit of the film, I'm making the final, some of the final belaying racks, except I think for one, I have one left to do that goes right by the bowsprit. And again, it's just get the pieces of wood the right size, file in the, uh, you know, the posts so that I can fit the uh, rack piece in, or that it'll stay semi-level and using the Dremel to drill things in because, oh dear mother of God, does the Dremel do a better job than a pin vise of not splitting this wood for whatever reason that is. Um, so yep, and here I am. I'm just uh, very carefully now using the plants as a reference trying to position all these belaying racks and I get partway through in this time lapse and now I'm going to go do some house cleaning and then I'm going to go film the rest of this because these are two weeks apart, not one week apart. Like all great clips. Alrighty, so if you've made it this far, um, sir, madam, assorted, uh, I, I commend you. That or I'm a lot funnier than I thought. So, as you can see, I've got some of the deck fittings, not all of them, and it's not just these like belaying pin racks and stuff that need to go on too. There's like a pump, there's going to be a wheel back here, all that other fun stuff. And then there's like, going to be cannons sticking out and all that fun stuff. So I've still got plenty to do. But I'm also moving soon, as I, I may or may not have mentioned. So I've probably got only one more video in me before that happens, and then there's just going to be a delay. Figured I'd give you a heads up on that. All right, I guess it's time for me, though, to get back into working on this thing, huh? Because this boat ain't going to finish itself. There we go, adding finishing touches to it. So, measuring out the holes uh, to get an idea of uh, where exactly to put all these uh, belaying racks. And very quickly, because it's a time lapse, you're going to see it gets, well, done. Yeah, I don't know it pins to... Alrighty, let's see if this all shimmed up and, you know, 
played with the uh, boat actually looks as good as I'm hoping. Oh, oh wow. Oh, that is nice. That gives me hope. That gives me hope, and it's not alcohol. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave. I might leave that joke in. Oh, oh, okay. Warm and fuzzies are gone. That sucks right there. Dang it. I know it's like the you know the an interior set of planking. That is just god damn it. Dang damn it. God damn it, Bobby. I know. King of the Hill reference and starting the music and not quite the start point because well I had to edit another part out good thing i did this uh good thing i was still awake when i was editing this movie so what i did there is you see me adding more planks cutting them to size tapering them down i think a lesson learned i might mention in a non-time less bit in a moment is uh next time i think i'm just gonna you know taper the planks in advance you know, because I have a way I could think to do that, and that would be helpful. And now what I'm doing is I'm super gluing because I got the planks to put it onto the next set of planks. You will now hear me talk about. Alright, so... You know how I said I don't like to use super glue? It's working really well here. So I'm going to continue using it, even though it's not necessarily my favorite glue. It's doing a good job here. Okay. So, I'm just going to keep using it and hoping that it works good. Okay, these next bits, I'm going to have to taper a bit on each end. So, come on, there we go. And then I uh, go back to full speed, as it were, and uh, cut this thing down. So, and then add more pieces, tapering them a bit and super gluing them until I've got things pretty well covered. I'm trying to use these outer planks to cover the gaps between the inner planks and try to really, what, what is it, uh, you know, sell the illusion, I think is what people called it. I don't know. I try to sound smart and I ain't all that brilliant. But, uh, yeah, again, taper, glue, taper, glue. And eventually I get to a part where I start talking about uh, other parts that I'm gluing and why I'm gluing them down, including this keel bit, which you see me do now. <clears throat> All right, so after I think the battery gave out, I did a bit of uh, work on smoothing this out and getting this uh, second layer of planking done. But guess who I found? Now, I've made the quip very often in my own life, and I'm sure you all have found it to be along your lives as well. Ah, there it is. Thought I lost it again. Finally found that thing. In the box, too, which is even more embarrassing. Uh, and yeah, this is, um, this was actually amongst all the cannon parts. Now, I don't know about you. I mean, I guess I could do a lot of sanding on this. This would take a while. I've already built this thing. The only issue I've got with it, honestly, is it seems like off-kilter. But if you're looking at it from here, like unless you're looking for it, you're barely gonna notice. And there's a couple things I can do to conceal the uh, the look of that. So that's what I'm gonna go about doing. Seems a fl sorry. Seems a fly has come to visit me. That one's interesting. It's got like hair on it or something. Eh. Oh, that's gone. Fly away. Alright, enough of obsessing about the fly. Hmm, in this case uh, I can obsess about trying to get this thing to look right. So, the idea is I took some of that plank that I cut all the strips out of, and I cut an outline of the ship, and then just kind of by eye did an offset of all those, um, of the that curve that I created, to try to make it so I could blend it all in, and make it look, at least from, you know, when you're looking at the model, like things are even even though they're not. And yes, flash of bald spot in front of the camera for hilarity. Alrighty, time to continue this uh, wonderful series of uh, ah, trying to make a boat that looks good. So, as you can see easily from the bottom, it is a bit off kelter. From the top, it's much harder to spot. 
Now, part of me wants to just narrow this down a bit, but up here it looks a bit more even. And from here it's not so bad. So my plan is to kind of work with this here. Seal up the back. And see if I can't maybe get this on in this segment of filming. Now, I know some of you are going to go, why Rich, why not make it absolutely perfect? And I can't say I disagree with that sentiment. But I will be honest, while I'm not necessarily half-butting this, because I'm not, eh, the other thing is I do really want to get back to that dreadnought because I've still got the superstructure to put, uh, you know, it's insides to put in, and then of course doing the whole thing of uh, putting stuff about the ship. But. You know, that's, uh, that comes later. Come on. Get in there, there we go. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Feel free to think of this as a poll and post in the comments if you like, but, uh, adding an interior to a model boat of any scale, does this qualify me as a rivet counter? Mm. You see, that's the hard part, because, I mean, I'm not actually counting every single rivet here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what I did there is I put on the keel. I thought I was doing that in the last time-lapse section, sorry. And now I'm just added uh, some uh, cross members and then, like, a mini deck for the boat that I put in. And then I compare things. There you go. Now I'm adding that last bit. And finally, beginning to measure out some pieces with which to make the oars. That's why you see me pull out the calipers and everything. The uh, booklet had plans for it, but uh, yeah. Okay, let's see if I can familiarize myself with how to do small, tiny knot work, huh? Alright, come on. Open up. Alright, this looks like it's the kind of lashing to use. And it looks like this is the amount to use, a very small amount. Because, you know, there'd be a good chance that they would just be holding these in place so that in case they needed to leave in a hurry, and that would necessitate them making it so you could leave in a hurry. Alright. Okay, my first real try at using the threads on this thing. Take one. Boom. And then I take an embarrassingly long amount of time to uh, tie this knot around these oars. After these oars, I look at the instructions and it tells me how to make little supports for this boat that go onto the deck of the main boat, so it's you know kind of holding onto itself. Of course, I use the wrong size wood, and I comment on that right about, well, now. All right. <laughs> so as you can see, I got the boat kind of laid on there. I made some racks that it told me to make for support, but I made it out of the wrong size wood. And of course, right after I found the uh, pieces that I made them, then I found the piece I needed to make them. So, hey, yeah, the law of the universe. You want to find something, get or make its replacement. That's proven very true for this build. Anyways, so, yeah, I also drilled a hole right there for a um, smokestack, and that's going to go in. And after I do, but before I do that, I'm just going to pre-prepare a little something. I need a 0.75 a millimeter wide hole, or rather four of them, for the eyelets for this thing. So I'm going to try this guy. And then I drill the holes. After getting some paints out and working on this uh, stove pipe here, uh, so yeah, I paint it with uh, acrylics. I don't didn't them. Then I drill holes for the little eyelets. Uh, those end up being for the lashing down the boat, which I also do in this time lapse. And again, takes me a rather embarrassing amount of time because small rope, big fat fingers. I do get it done though. I do lash it down. All right. So on the one hand. I don't, well, yeah, I don't have that much more to do, but it's like, nah, I might as well let this thing dry and then do it right. Well, actually, I could just do it right now. 
and then paint the rest later, which is, in my eyes, that is actually quite appropriate. Is this going to fit in there? I can safely schmuff that in, can't I? Yep, I can. I'm gonna be, not going to be the easiest thing to do, but it is doable. And so I will do it because... Alright. And then I go ahead, I paint the piece and I put it on. And then a new camera angle, which I used for a little bit for the last filming session, uh, for when I was doing up the pump, which I talk about right now. So I guess what I'll do is I'll do these up and then uh, I have to paint this in a way that looks convincing so I think I get away if I'm gonna do that I should probably shave this down too yeah great and then uh, marvelous yup yup great yeah it's gonna take a while Maybe I should have saved this for the next one, huh? Well, maybe it won't take as long as I, I feared. Okay, never mind. That's not so bad. Extreme filing! Filing faster than an office bunny. Filing faster than a convict in a prison cell that got the file in the classic cake from home. As well as pulling out wood bits uh, for this pump thing. So essentially it's got like wood supports and the metal pump thing. And of course since the metal pump thing isn't all that detailed, you know, I gotta paint it up a bit better than would be expected. Part of getting this whole thing assembled is gonna be paint getting this painted up. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, so, sorry, I had a brain fart moment there, but besides the uh, getting the wood bits, I'm going to have to paint this up, so I need something that will represent wood very well, which I think what I'll do is I need a good dark brown to start with, that's going to be this guy here, I remember, the, yes, I did remember the black paint in good. I'm going to try and dry brush a bit of this on just to add some kind of texture. And then, of course, we have black because everything is black. And then the Retribute Armor base for the brass bits. You know, give some liveliness to the metal here. Huh? So there's my paint selection. And, of course, another brush to apply it to the uh, more precise areas. Okay. Let's boogie! Alright, and now as you can see, I start trying to assemble this, uh, some of the wood bits. Just, you know, because there's little feet for those wood bits. And as you see now, I paint brown for the where the big wood handle of the pump would be. I put black for where those arms and probably the actual pumping bits themselves are. And then some little bits of gold after in a few of the places, just to kind of add a little bit of, um, variety, if you will, liven it up a bit. And then after I do that, I actually assemble the thing using super glue for the wood bits that go in places. And then, of course, super gluing it to the deck when I've got it all said and done. And the last thing is, as I mentioned, I do do a bit of dry brushing to bring out a more lively texture to this thing. Alright, time for an outro. Alright, so if you've made it to this point, and, uh, you know, you've made it through my sense of humor and probably the increasing amount of time lapse towards the end of that uh thank you you are sir madam other are a beast um and i'd like to thank you for you know your attention um so as you can see quite a bit of progress this week uh namely in making a boat putting in belaying racks or sorry progress this past two weeks but boat belaying racks and of course this pump guy here and actually beginning to mount this thing and learning a little bit about the rigging and a little smokestack too. Now I know somebody might think, smokestack for, for a sailing vessel? What's going on here? Interestingly enough, one is how do you expect the smoke to get out of the boat for the stove? Two, interestingly enough, outside of that, there were actually steamships that had sail, like the first ships. I think like the Oceanic class from White Star Line might be an example of which the uh, SS Atlantic was part. Um, yeah, it was actually, uh, had a 
full complement of sails as a backup if the steam engines went offline. So, yeah, there was that. But anyway, that's neither here nor there, so I am Rich, this is my channel, RMAX Models, this has been Mamoli Lexington Part 8, and, uh, well, I guess it is now time to end this with the YouTube dance of like, share, subscribe, hooray! Alright, that's about as zany as I get. Peace out.